pro-Bitcoin candidate Javier Malay wins Argentina's presidential election. Huge news, my friends. Another president of a country that is pro-Bitcoin. And we have data that shows XRP is being accumulated by whales, even with the price fluctuations that have been taking place. We're going to break this down and much more. Let's get into it. Welcome to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as a thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple, please leave a five star rating and review. It supports the podcast and it doesn't cost you anything. Well, folks, the breaking news here is that pro Bitcoin candidate Javier Malay has won the Argentina presidential election. This is huge news, folks. And if you recall, he's been calling for the dollarization of the country's economy. And he's been a big fan of Bitcoin calling out the central bank and saying, you know, they're the ones responsible for the hyperinflation. And he's absolutely right. You know, Argentina has been plagued by hyperinflation, where the money has just been reduced to nothing, folks. And it's really hard for people living there, as you can imagine. So there's an opportunity here for this to be fixed. And you have someone who understands money and currency. And let me give you some of his quotes. And this goes back, once again, months. I'm sure many of you may have heard about this. So he showed support for Bitcoin, stating it represents the return of money to its original creator, the private sector. He also argued for the abolishment of Argentina's central bank, calling it a scam. <laughs> and he also called for the dollarization of Argentina's economy, which hit a recent uh, inflation rate of 124.4%. Insane, right, folks? Insane. Uh, but look, the opportunities here and folks, we got another pro Bitcoin president. The other is Nayib Bukele of El Salvador. Folks, game theory will play out here. You're going to see many more countries do this around the world, adopt Bitcoin, make it legal tender. And I think a lot of people recognize that we have a, an inflation problem around the world. Now, certainly it's ebbs and flows. And in certain countries, it's out of control. And some, it's okay. Here in the United States, they've been combating it by raising rates. But many countries don't have that privilege because, look, the United States has the world reserve currency. So we are able to pull certain levers, but many other countries don't have that issue. And as you can see, Argentina's uh, president, now president, he wants to bring the US dollar and dollarize the economy there. So Huge news. Here's what Caitlin Long had to say on the news. She said, I'm so grateful to the work of early Bitcoiners who grew up in Argentina, including and especially Wences Casares. It took me, and I hope I, I didn't butcher his name, <laughs> uh, it took you some time to orange pill the country, but you did it. Now let's hope Malay lives up to his promise and doesn't abandon his principles after take, he takes power. So once again, folks, I position this as an opportunity. I didn't say it was definitive or done, right? So we have to keep to make sure we uh, put the pressure and, and those who are in Argentina listening to this, that they continue to put the pressure. But folks, we're moving in the right direction. And from a macro perspective, I think when President Bush Kelly made his move, uh, I think it set off a domino effect. And I think there's going to be many other countries, especially in Latin America and South America, that are going to do this, folks, because many of them are dealing with a lot of inflation currency issues. Um, so we shall see what happens. But nevertheless, very bullish news. I think we can all agree on that. Now, let's move ahead. Uh, I wanted to share some data here from Charlie Biello, um, who is the chief market strategist at Creative Planning, showing Bitcoin returns from 2010 through 2023. So 2023 year to date. So far for this year, Bitcoin has a return of 121% uh, using the open price at the beginning of the year. And then, of course, the end price of, uh, at the end of the year. So 2022 was down 65%. 2021 was 60 up 66%. 2020 up 301%. Uh, 2019 up 95%. So you just see a lot more green than red, right? And the reds are those bear market years. But uh, Bitcoin and the entire crypto asset class is still very young. And there's still a lot of upside, folks. And I think this next bull market is going to be epic. One could argue, though, for Bitcoin, Bitcoin, the returns might not be as significant over time. We've seen a lower rate of return, but it's still, it outpaces traditional assets for the most part, right? There's nothing that performs like it in the traditional markets. And uh, this is where altcoins, I think, will have their, their turn to shine. 
as uh, many altcoins start to grow and have their day uh, getting certain recognition, ETFs and all these products built around them. So very, very bullish. And speaking of altcoins, XRP, uh, despite XRP's 18% drop over the past 10 days, there's been a notable uptick in whale transactions in their holdings. This growing interest from major players could be a precursor to a XRP price rebound. Well, folks, overall, I think we can say that the market is rebounded from November, December 2022. The question is, what will be the local top of this rally, then a pullback, and then the slow steady grind into new all-time highs in 2025 or late 2024? So at the at this point, it's it's up only, right, from a macro perspective. I'm not talking about the little roller coaster rides from an hourly and daily standpoint. That's going to happen, right? You, you can't stop that. That volatility exists. But the point is, where is it trending? Are we trending downwards or upwards? I think we can all agree we're trending upwards. And I believe XRP is going to be one of the top performers in this next bull market. Why do I say that? Well, it has the clarity, folks. I, you know, if you told me that XRP was going to remain in the top 10, even with the SEC lawsuit, even with being delisted on U.S. exchanges, I would not have believed you folks, because any coin that took that type of hit would have suffered incredibly. But somehow XRP held up. And that's a testament to its strength and the trading that's happening internationally outside the U.S. So the SEC lawsuit, while it slowed it down, and didn't allow it to go to the new all-time highs in, in the last bull market, uh, that's been moved out of the way. That hurdle, that roadblock is out of the way. The runway is clear, folks. And with the SEC taking hits and the narratives that are out there and Ripple ramping up their partnerships, I think XRP is going to be a huge performer. I think whales recognize that. And uh, I, I'm a believer because of the data, because of the facts and research, not my emotions. And I want to state, I state that because sometimes people think, oh, you love this coin or this. But I'm like, no, I'm looking at real world adoption. I'm looking at narratives. I'm looking at what the, is the overall scenario of and situation of the entire market, folks. So that's how I'm approaching it logically, reasonably, and looking at facts. This is very bullish news. Now, there's some updates here around the XRP Ledger, and we're seeing a lot more developer activity on the XRP Ledger, a lot more features being built. So Bishop Fox has completed individual audits and remediation reports for the for both the XLS38 bridge and EVM, that's um, Ethereum virtual machine sidechain on the XRP Ledger. So they posted uh, here on dev.to the results from the Bishop Fox security audit and remediation of the cross-chain bridge and EVM sidechain. Uh, here's some details. As new and exciting developments are made on the XRP ledger, comprehensive security audits remain an important part of ensuring innovations remain rigorous and secure. On July 24th, the cybersecurity firm Bishop Fox completed an extensive security audit of the EVM sidechain. The team specifically assessed the EVM sidechain implementation, its consensus mechanism, and bridging implementation between the XRPL and EVM that uses cross-chain bridging, which is XLS-38D specification for the XRPL. On October 6th, uh, Bishop Fox delivered remediation reports for both the EVM sidechain and the XLS-38 cross-chain bridge. All of the reports are listed below, followed by a summary of findings. Folks, all great news. Uh, the EVM is used by many different blockchains, and I'm glad it's coming to the XRP ledger to enable more features and develop new uh, products and all, all kinds of different use cases. So, very bullish news. This is what you want to see for any blockchain, that there is developer activity, there's expansion, there's further iterations. Now, quick word from our sponsor, uh, that is Uphold, which is a great platform where you can buy Bitcoin and XRP and all the top altcoins. They have 260 plus cryptocurrencies. I've been using this platform since 2018. I've interviewed the CEO, CFO, and many other folks. Uh, in fact, you can also trade precious metals and 37 fiat currencies. They have a great app great platform. And folks, they are 100% reserved. So they are safe to use. They do audits. So they don't lend out your funds. They don't commingle your funds. I say these things because after what happened with Celsius and FTX, it's important to use a platform that is audited, that has proof of reserves, right, folks? So you can go verify all of this stuff. And I trust this platform. I can vouch for it. So if you'd like to learn more, please visit the link in the description.
Now let's move ahead. We got news around Avalanche. It seems there's been a lot of news around Avalanche recently. The native token is AVAX. I hold some AVAX in my portfolio. In fact, after we heard about Citigroup and JP Morgan using uh, Avalanche for uh, tokenization, I'm actually looking to add more to my portfolio. So, you know, not financial advice. Please do your own research. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. But here's the news. Tech firm Republic taps Avalanche for a profit sharing investment note. The blockchain based investment note is issued on Avalanche and will automatically distribute profits to holders' wallets. That's pretty incredible, folks. Um, let, let's go through the details here. Neo investment and technology firm Republic plans to issue a blockchain based security token that will pay dividends to retail investors from profits across its board portfolio of investment holdings. The Republic Note is a profit-sharing digital asset that will be launched on the Avalanche blockchain, which accrues profits generated from Republic's wide-ranging investment portfolio and services. Republic has attracted over 3 million investors and has deployed over $2.6 billion into various ventures, including the likes of Web3 firms Avalanche, Dapp Radar, and Dapper Labs. Republic has already carried out a pre-sale round for the Republic Note, attracting over $30 million from individual and institutional investors. Dividends from the note are set to be paid out in USDC coin, or uh, which is a stable coin, folks, to retail investors when the dividend pool reaches a threshold of $2 million. Folks, this is the future. And many of you hold stocks where you get dividends and payouts and so forth. Imagine that on a blockchain where you can use it and do different things, uh, opening up secondary markets and much more. And uh, this could be worldwide, so not restricted to certain markets and uh, verifiable because it's on the blockchain. It could be done any time, any hour, any day. No, There's no bank closures or anything you have to worry about, right, folks? Uh, this is the future, the token economy, which I've been telling you all about for a very long time. Everything running on the blockchain, folks. Huge, huge news here. And once again, Avalanche is involved. So I don't know if any of you hold the AVAX token, but uh, just... It's important to note what the native token is and which blockchains are getting adoption. Finally, I want to tell you about crypto funding news. So three companies secured 90 million plus in raises. So folks, every week we're seeing millions of dollars being invested into the crypto asset class, whether it be the tokens and the companies building the infrastructure. So uh, really great to see this. So crypto exchange and wallet service blockchain.com raised $110 million in a Series E led by Kingsway, the parent company of crypto exchange OSL, raised $91 million via a share subscription and tokenized currency from Finality announced a $95 million round led by Goldman Sachs and BNP Parabis. Folks, Goldman Sachs. Watch what they do, not what they say. You probably go talk to Jamie Dimon. I know he's at JP Morgan, but you talk to Jay, uh, Goldman Sachs guys, they probably say, oh, whatever, crypto, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, whatever. But they're making moves. They're investing, folks. So blockchain.com's $110 million round is the year's fourth largest fundraise following Blockstream, Layer Zero, and Rollcoin, according to DeFi Llama data. The company declined to disclose a valuation, but Bloomberg reported a valuation of less than half of the $14 billion mark the platform secured last year. Man, blockchain.com is getting a lot of funds. Uh, I personally haven't used any of their services. I guess they're still going strong. They do have a lot of the blockchain data out there, so I think that's part of you know, they get a lot of traffic that way. But I know some people who use their wallet. Um, I know one person who lost funds using their wallet, but, you know, I don't have all the details on that. But I personally don't use their service. So you can let me know if you do in the comment section. But uh, they're getting a lot of money, folks. So with the move, Manny Stotes, CEO of UK venture firm Kingsway and Nicholas Brand, partner at VC fund Lakestar, will join blockchain.com's board of directors. Hong Kong-based VC Technology Group, which owns crypto exchange OSL, acquired 90 one million dollars when the crypto firm BGX purchased almost 30 percent of the company's stock through a share subscription and keyword or key location there folks Hong Kong and who controls Hong Kong China and a lot of people are still blinded by China banning Bitcoin mining and crypto years ago folks they've done a 180 they haven't put out the headlines like we are in favor of crypto now we've unbanned it 
right? They, they haven't done that. But you look at the financial moves they're doing and the regulatory moves they're doing, things are opening up. In August, OSL joined Hashkey as the first exchange to acquire Hong Kong's new license to facilitate retail crypto trading in the city. Finality is a fintech firm focused in part on tokenizing securities, that is, making traditional financial assets like gold or treasury bonds synthetic and storing them on the blockchain. The tokenization of real-world assets has been popular among financial institutions. As of late, JP Morgan and HSBC both ramped up potential tokenization offerings in recent weeks. So the JP Morgan news was, of course, related to Avalanche. HSBC was related to Ripple and, and uh, Medico. So, folks... Game theory playing out. Everybody's in a race now. Uh, it's it's pretty amazing. So other notable fundraisers include K-pop fan engagement startup Madhas raised eighteen mil, excuse me, eight million dollars in a Series A round led by Surfmion. If I'm saying that right, boy, that's hard to pronounce. Uh, CFX Labs raised nine point five million dollars in a seed funding to grow its remittance focused stablecoin payment product on Solana. Bitcoin Ordinals project Taproot Wizards announced a $7.5 million seed round led by Standard Crypto. Folks, very bullish news. I hope you see the capital that's flowing in here. People are betting on this industry and this asset class. They wouldn't be doing that if they thought it was going to die and it was never coming back and the governments are going to ban it, right? These are all FUD things that we see pop up from time to time. And if you're not well-versed and well-researched as to what's happening behind the scenes, you know, aside from headlines and and you won't get this on mainstream media... Um, if you're not familiar with what happened, you're going to listen to Jim Cramer and you're going to listen to headlines and be like, oh no, I better not touch this. It's all going to die. It's all going to go away. But this is why financial education is important and why you need to understand where's the money coming from? Where is it going? We are seeing a lot of it being injected into this market. Huge, huge news. Uh, I would love to get your thoughts on what you all think about the Javier Malay news. I think that's just massive. And uh, the XRP news as well, whales accumulating XRP. Folks, that's the news. Leave your thoughts and comments below. We hit the five-star rating on the podcast platform. Also, please follow me on all social platforms. I have TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. All the links will be in the description. Also, sign up for my free email newsletter. Link in the description, folks. Thank you for watching and listening. I appreciate your support, and I'll talk to you all later. Thank you.